I considered changing the title of my talk to Everything I Learned About Being a Good Engineer I Learned on a Reality TV Show. <laughs> Unfortunately, that title was too long. But I did learn some major lessons from my recent reality show experience that I would have never learned in a typical career. But before I share these lessons, let me share the experience with you. I recently spent seven weeks as a cast member on a reality TV show called The Big Brain Theory. The show was an engineering competition with eight challenges and 10 contestants, all of us with engineering backgrounds. The engineering challenges were really difficult. Most of them required us to build something either massive or complicated, all in really li very little time. And the lessons I learned surprised me. Overall, the lessons I learned made me realize that we have shifted away from a culture of innovation. Those lessons are, first, the need to reunite engineering and manufacturing. Second, the power of pure focus. And third, the vital role of failure in innovation. The experience on the show was unique for us engineers because it's not actually very common for engineers to have to make what we've designed. Typically, we just create the drawings, send them off to the shop, and hope everything fits when it gets back. But what we learned from participating in the manufacturing process was that the opportunities to redesign were very much inspired by the manufacturing process itself. And those opportunities to redesign made our final products so much better. I want to relate this to manufacturing in the US. For the past half century, we have seen a massive shift of our manufacturing overseas. Now, on paper, to someone who's running a company, this seems like an easy, no-brainer way to increase profit. But the detriments of separating engineering and manufacturing are not quantifiable on a spreadsheet. What we are missing out on is the fact that when you actually make something yourself, only then can you engineer it to its finest detail. Anyone who knows how to make a good product knows that engineering and manufacturing are wedded till death do them part. With Apple, although it appears they outsource to China, they actually own their overseas manufacturing facilities. And their engineers live there, evolving things just as if manufacturing was happening in-house. Can you imagine the Pope asking Michelangelo to merely develop plans for the Sistine Chapel, but to save money, the church would be outsourcing to cheaper laborers? I know it's hard to relate engineering to art, but creating a great engineered machine takes just as much passion, creativity, talent, technique, and intuition as creating a great piece of art. And a true artist will always be a part of that creation process. That's because creating a true masterpiece comes from repainting, remixing, and evolving the creation as it develops. So the first step to refoster a culture of innovation is to reunite engineering and manufacturing. The second lesson I learned on the show was the power of pure focus and its impact on innovation. Pure focus happens when all distractions from a single goal are removed. This is exactly what happened for us on the show. For seven weeks, we were completely isolated from the outside world. We weren't allowed cell phones or internet access, and our entire days were devoted to the competition. Everything was taken care of for us, from meals to transportation to even cleaning our rooms. Our focus was strictly reserved for the competition. And I'm telling you, if you haven't seen the show, we built some really amazing things in very little time. One of my favorites was the waterfall challenge. The teams were tasked with building a system to harness the energy of a waterfall to elevate a person one story high. Both teams came up with some really innovative design and designs in just a matter of days. In the real world, making something like this would take weeks of design and manufacturing. But because we were isolated from all other distractions, we were able to reach our goal in a fraction of the time. Now think about how our daily lives are not like this. In school, we sit in class for an hour or so before the bell rings, and then we're packing up and switching gears to go study a different topic. In the workplace, we have a lot of competing demands, from meetings to attend, reports to write, and emails to answer. And to add to all this chaos, we have our portable electronic devices that are constantly notifying us of social media updates, calendar appointments, and who else, who knows what else. How do you expect to really be innovative with all that going on? How much longer do you think it would have taken Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel while he was checking his Twitter account every 15 minutes? Yet this is what we expect of ourselves. We expect that we can handle the multitasking and still produce innovation. 
Unfortunately, this is just not possible. Because in the realm of innovation, there's that thing called the aha moment. The aha moment is when that figurative light bulb goes off and the solution to our problem becomes clear. Shouldn't surprise you when I say that aha moments are critical to innovation. It also shouldn't surprise you when I say that aha moments only happen after periods of intense focus. Think about a difficult problem you've had at work or at school. Did you have your aha moment while casually checking your email and maybe thinking about the problem and doing something else? Or did you have your aha moment once you isolated yourself from all the distractions and really dug into the problem? If our society wants to shift back to a culture of innovation, we need to recognize the power of pure focus and tap into it as much as we possibly can. So put away the cell phones, log off the social media, and give yourself time to focus. The third lesson I want to share with you is the vital role of failure in innovation. In the competition, we were given a lot of opportunities to fail, and we failed a lot. But for the most part, we failed because we were trying something new, hard, or innovative. The very first challenge was to devise a mechanical system to decelerate a package on board a vehicle undergoing a 35-mile-per-hour crash. Our team devised a simple rail and braking system so to slow the package to a smooth stop. Even though we had a really great design, we ultimately failed this challenge. Our rails bent and stalled our package. Our design was based on the assumption that with copious amounts of bracing, our frame should have been with able, able to withstand the impact of the crash. And what I learned from this massive mess up was the massive need to check my assumptions. And I'll keep this lesson with me forever. If our society wants to excel in innovation, we need to recognize the role of failure and embrace it. Because as I learned on the show, when you're trying something new, hard, or innovative, failure is not only inevitable, but it's also sometimes necessary to learn those massive lessons. It was a hard pill to swallow at first, but over the course of the competition, we learned to appreciate failure. Thomas Edison is a classic example, trying something like 10,000 different materials before finding a suitable filament for the light bulb. Edison truly understood the role of failure and in innovation when he said, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways which won't work. I don't know about you, but I would have stopped at maybe like, oh, a thousand. Think about what the world would be like without Edison's perseverance through failure. It'd be literally dark, right? I know it's easy to apply the lesson of failure to someone who's about to invent the light bulb, but do we really apply this to ourselves? Think of a big failure you've had in your life. Did you let yourself learn from the experience? Or did you let the shame of failure blind you? Now think of a world where all these great inventions, think of what it would be like. Think of all the great inventions that haven't been created just because of the fear of failure. If our society wants to excel in innovation, we need to teach the future generations that failure is just a step on the way to success. And there's no shame in failing when you're trying something new, hard, or innovative. So don't let the fear of failure keep you from trying something new. And don't let the shame of failure rob you from a lesson that could spawn that next great invention and change the world. I hope you can apply the lessons I learned about reuniting engineering and manufacturing, the power of pure focus, and the vital role of failure and innovation to your own lives. I believe if we instill these principles in our society, we will be preparing the future generations with the values needed to go beyond boundaries and solve the world's problems. Thank you.